Hello, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, for April 18th, 2022. Here, you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, with the goal of accomplishing Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 28. But he said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And we know that in John six thirty-five, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. And in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6 through 7, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Amen. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, He was in the beginning with God. And verse 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that life came as described in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Amen. And the book of John chapter 14 verse 15 through 18, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. And verse 15, verse 26, But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. John 16, verse 8 through 11. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you will see me no more. And of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. And the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 18. Through 19, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Verse 19, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. And the book of John, chapter 15, verse 7, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Hallelujah and glory to God. And so the words that we shall hear today are Psalm 85, Proverb 18, because it is the 18th day of the month and there are 31 Proverbs, seemingly one for each day of the month. The Proverbs are God's wisdom, His instructions, for getting along with him, your spouse, your parents, your children, the government, how to live skillfully, a skillful godly life in an ungodly world. Amen. And the Old Testament reading will be from the book of Joshua chapter 7 verse 1 through chapter 8 verse 35 the new testament reading will be from the book of luke chapter 9 verse 37 through 62 all scriptures are taken from the new king james version of the bible copyright 1982 
by Thomas Nelson Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. And now Psalm 85, which is a psalm of the sons of Korah, and it reads, Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. Selah. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. Restore us, O God of our salvation, and cause your anger toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Hallelujah. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and shall make his footsteps our pathway. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed, as is I pray every hearer, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And now Proverb 18, and it reads, A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. When the wicked comes, contempt comes also, and with dishonor comes reproach. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. It is not good to show partiality to the wicked, or to overthrow the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calls for blows. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the animal's body. He who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, and like a high wall in his own esteem. Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it, it is folly and shame to him. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Amen. Hallelujah. The first one to plead his cause seems right, until his neighbor comes and examines him. Casting lots causes contentions to cease, and keeps the mighty apart. A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, and contentions are like the bars of a castle. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. The poor man uses entreaties, but the rich answers roughly. Verse 24 and last. A man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Amen and amen and in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This word is already blessed. And now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Old Testament reading from the book of Joshua, beginning at chapter 7. And it reads, 
But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed things. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not weary all the people there, for the people of Ai are few. So about three thousand men went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai, and the men of Ai struck down about thirty-six men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Sherebam, Shebarim, and struck them down on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Verse 6, Then Joshua tore his clothing, tore his clothes, and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Oh, that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you any more, unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow... Because, thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to families, and the families which the Lord takes shall come by household, and the household which the Lord takes shall come man by man. Then it shall be that he who was taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire, and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has made a disgraceful thing, he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. Verse 16. So Joshua rose early in the morning, and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. He brought the clan of Judah, and he took the family of the Zaharites. Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. Then he brought the household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zarah, the tribe of Judah, was taken. Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession to him, and tell him how, tell him, tell me now, what you have done, do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, two hundred shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing fifty shekels, I coveted them and took them, and there they are hidden in this earth in the midst of my tent, with the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and there it was, hidden in his tent, with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zarah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had, 
and they brought them to the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Then they raised over him a great heap of stones, still there to this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Therefore the name of that place has been called the Valley of Achor to this day. Chapter 8 Now the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you, and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. And you shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king. Only its spoil, its cattle, you shall take as booty for yourselves. Lay an ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua arose, and all the people of war, to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose thirty thousand men, men of valor, and sent them right, and sent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie in ambush against the city behind the city. Do not go very far from the city, but all of you be ready. Then I and all the people who are with me will approach the city, and it will come about, when they come out against us, as at the first, that we shall flee before them, for they will come out after us till we have drawn them from the city, for they will say, They are fleeing before us as the first, therefore we will flee before them. Then you shall arise from the ambush and seize the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it will be, when you have taken the city, that you shall set the city on fire. According to the commandment of the Lord you shall do. See, I have commanded you. Joshua therefore sent, from, sent them out, and they went to lie in ambush, and stayed between Bethel and Ai on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged that night among the people. Then Joshua rose up early in the morning and mustered the people and went up, he and the elders of Israel, before the people of Ai, before the people to Ai. And all the people of war who were with him went up and drew near, and they came before the city and camped on the north side of Ai. Now a valley lay between them and Ai. So he took about five thousand men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people, all the army that was on the north of the city and its rear guard on the west side of the city, Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. Now it happened, when the king of Ai saw it, that the men of the city hurried and rose early and went out against Israel to battle. He and all his people had an appointed place behind the plain, but he did not know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. And Joshua and all Israel made it made as if they were beaten before them, and fled by way of the wilderness. So all the people who were in Ai were called together to pursue them, and they pursued Joshua, and were drawn away from the city. There was not a man left in Ai. Or Bethel, who did not go out after Israel. So they left the city open and pursued Israel. Verse 18, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in your hand toward I, for I will give it into your hand. And Joshua stretched out the spear that was in his hand toward the city. So those in ambush arose quickly out of their place. They ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand, and they entered the city and took it, and hurried to set the city on fire. And when the men of I looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended to heaven. So they had no power to flee this way or that way, and the people who had fled to the wilderness turned back on the pursuers. Now when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, they turned back and struck down the men of Ai. Then the others came out of the city against them, so that they were caught in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side. And they struck them down, so that they let none of them remain or escape. But the king of Ai they took alive and brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass, when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness where they pursued them, and when they had all, and when they all had fallen by the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all 
the Israelites returned to Ai and struck it with the edge of the sword. So it was that all who fell that day, both men and women, were twelve thousand, all the people of Ai. For Joshua did not draw back his hand, with which he stretched out the spear, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the livestock and the spoil of that city Israel took as booty for themselves, according to the word of the Lord, which he had commanded Joshua. So Joshua burned Ai, and made it a heap for ever, a desolation to this day. And the king of Ai he hanged on a tree until evening. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua's command was that he should take his corpse down from the tree, cast it in the entrance of the gate of the city, and raise over it a great heap of stones that remains to this day. Now Joshua built an altar to the God, to the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded the children of Israel, as is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones, over which no man had wielded an iron tool. And they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord, and sacrificed peace offerings. And there, in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. Then all Israel, with the elders and officers and judges, stood on either side of the ark, before the priests, the Levites, who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord. The stranger as well as he who was born among them, Half of them were in front of Mount Gizam, and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded them, and they sh that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law, verse 35 and last. The, there was not a word of all that Moses had commanded, which Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel, with the women, the little ones, and the strangers who were living among them. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as is, I pray, every hearer in Jesus' name. And now, the New Testament reading from the book of Luke, continuing in chapter 9 with verse 37. And it reads, Now it happened on the next day when, he had, when they had come down from the mountain that a great multitude met him. Suddenly a man from the multitude cried out, saying, Teacher, I implore you, look on my son. For he is my only child. And behold, the spirit seizes him, and he suddenly cries out. It convulses him, though, so that he foams at the mouth, and it departs from him with great difficulty, bruising him. So I implored your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. And as he was still coming, the demon threw him down and convulsed him. Then Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the child, and gave him back to his father. And they were all amazed at the majesty of God. But while everyone marveled at all the things which Jesus did, he said to his disciples, Let these words sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. But they did not understand this saying, and it was hidden from them, so that they did not perceive it. And they were afraid to ask him about this saying. Then a dispute arose among them as to which of them would be the greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a little child and set him by him, and said to them, Whoever receives this little child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you all will be great. Now John answered and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him, because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, Do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is on our side. Now it came to pass, when the time had come for him to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, and sent messengers before his face, 
and as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, just as Elisha did? But he turned and rebuked them, and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Now it happened, as they journeyed on the road, that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell, who are at my house. Verse 62 and last. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. And I pray as is every hero, in Jesus' name. I pray also in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that as we have heard the word, as it is written in Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as we have heard this word of God, I pray that this word has been sent, the word that has been sent has healed us, and delivered us, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, from every destruction of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah.